All right, guys. Welcome back to the Go Ruck Show. My name is Blaine. I'm here with Jason, and this is the Tall Boy Edition. So, <laughs> so cheers. At least I was on the right train. Yay! Feeling, cheers, Jason right? Jason's feeling a little, little right after. Right so now. right after I cracked mine, you know, joke was on me. Imagine that. All of a sudden, it's the Tall Boy Edition, and I got to drink faster or something. Got it. Well, wrap that one up, and you can grab you can grab a, a big boy beer like the rest of us. So also. Bomber. He put out some rules a couple days ago. I think some some drinking game that's associated now with this show. So I just want you guys to know. I saw the rules, and if we wanted to, we'd actually debated just spending the whole show. Right. So here's a sip. I took one. You took one. I took one. You took one. Blah blah blah. All right. Yeah, we cool. could just make this whole show about like hitting all of the uh, all the triggers that make you guys drink. But I think we'll we'll try to actually talk about something meaningful. Let's instead. do it. Okay. So this week we're going to talk about travel, and not just like. Which you know, Pacific Islands have the best beaches or whatever. But how to travel like a green beret? How to maximize the awesomeness of your travel while also minimizing sort of your risk or becoming a becoming a mark or an easy target? And we've got a little experience through some official travel, but also through some some unofficial travel that I think we can share, and hopefully you guys will uh, will find useful. So yeah, of note, we're we're not saying take no risks. We're no. no. <laughs> That is I mean, no kind of life. <laughs> that's no kind of life. You got to go to awesome places. You got to do awesome stuff. But we don't want people that we love. You know, we don't want anybody that we love or like getting taken. You've seen the movie. You get it, right? That's bad. Don't want that fate. So there's a difference between being a hard target and an easy target, and that applies to any type of the permissive environments, non-permissive, semi-permissive, permissive, and and so we're gonna sort of dig into some of that stuff today. Yeah, including what, what those terms even mean. But so maybe to start off with why, why, do, you, why do we travel? Why, why do we think people should travel? Why do people want to travel? I know in the military you get orders to do some travel, right? So you go because you have to. and you've got See to the go, world. Yeah, join the military, see the world, right? Which is legit, by the way. I mean, I, I saw the military. a lot of the world. It was yeah. great. I didn't, yeah, I didn't I mean, see a lot of uh, garden spots, but people were okay, I guess. It's what, you make. Cases, it's what you make of it, right? That's true. As a guy who was assigned to Fort Knox, Fort Hood, Fort Benning, and Fort Bragg, mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a great time in all those places, by the way. So I didn't go to any of the, uh, the military installations that are generally thought of as like really nice places to live, but I mean, I my no favorite trip ever was to the Islamic Republic of Mauritania with, with my Special Forces team. Yeah, well, so, who, who you're with makes a big difference. Yeah, who you're with and what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, so it's, sure. you know, get out there, see the world. But so what, why travel in the first place, right? It's comfy at home. You know your surroundings. Comfort very is the risk. enemy. Oh, it's okay. So first reason we travel is because comfort is the enemy. What does that mean in, in travel parlance, Jason? I mean, we can get too complacent. I mean, I, you know, without pontificating too much. I mean, you travel because it's awesome, right? See new things, new adventures, broadens your horizons. Yeah, yeah. The word I would use is perspective because I think... If you just hang out in your little corner of the, the world, there's this great Twain quote you sent me yesterday that we can't remember all of it right now, but it, <laughs> it basically says that. No, it doesn't basically say. Look what it says. Oh, here, Blaine's got, got it memorized on our, the whiteboard now. Our co-producer, co <laughs> Lee McCarthy, helped us out here. So the quote is, and I'll just read it verbatim, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness, and many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. So basically what he's saying is, you know, you're sort of prejudiced to your own biases. However, you really could use the experience of traveling because it gives you the word I would use is perspective. Mm -hmm. You just need to see the world um, for what it is, but also perhaps through other people's eyes to give you both an appreciation for what you have, which we as Americans probably lack appreciation in a lot of cases for what we have, but also to better understand the other people that influence us throughout, not just our communities, but throughout the whole world, right? Right. So the first thing you have to do is take, is, is, know when you travel, it, does someone else have a bias, right? The, the short answer is yes. You know, the locals can tell who's not local. We all can. Someone comes into Jack's Beach, you know, dressing like they're, you know, out of, Will, out of Williamsburg, you know, not naming any names, Christian, you know. Wow, doesn't, naming names already. <laughs> oh, whoops. Woo. Church, we love you. Um, <laughs> you know, you can tell they're not really from here. And that's, like, that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. And so, you know, when I was in Germany, the summer of 98, 
I was there as my first first time to, to Europe. So and this was like what between high school and college, give or take. Was, so you're 18, it was 19 after years my old. Freshman year of college. Okay, so you're a young, not old enough to drink in the states. Right, but not I was old enough to drink in Europe. Old enough to drink in Europe, and I had a I had a buddy there. He was he was German. We played tennis together in in high school. He was a boarder, and then went over and stayed with him and, and his family in in Heidelberg. And I love Heidelberg. He he was he was brutal to me, right? To make because I showed up looking like an American, like I had here. And, he and you said, were friends before this. Oh yeah, we were great okay. friends. He's, I was the best man at his wedding, you know, a couple months ago, right? Like we're great friends still. And he was, he's like, you are such an embarrassment with the way that you look right now, right? It, it, all the times. And it, it wasn't just my face, probably had something to do with it, but it wasn't just my face, And this right? was before Crocs, so I, what was it? What was, <laughs> what was causing you to look so... So we would, you know, it was just the, the, type of, the type of dress, it was too baggy, my shoes were white some of the time, you know. Sometimes I wore my tennis shoes anywhere but the tennis courts, you know, stuff like that, right? Not you know, very fashionable. Not very, not fashionable enough for him, you know? And so take that to, to, toward the end of the summer after he sort of beat me into, hey, this is, this is how you need to, he was basically giving me a pretty good lesson in how to be a, a hard target there, how to be a gray man, mm -hmm. how to blend in so that, yes, if you open your mouth and you have to speak, they're always going to know where you're from, right? They're, you're going to know sure. if you're from here or you're not from here. Or whatever, but if you want to be a harder target than a soft target, then at a minimum, at first glance, you cannot look like you're out of place. And so, by the end of the trip, you know, we would go and we would start, you know, drinking on whatever afternoon it was. We sit on the church steps, and that now he was sort of—I was the token American with his group of friends. And I don't feel that great about that, right? <laughs> but leverage that to your advantage. But it could you know leverage it to my advantage. And, and so I was the one where they, you know, now they would point at all the other Americans that were, that were walking around and they'd point out how, you know, out of place they looked. And I'll, I'll say out of place as as sort of, you know, protect the guilty, right? But they, they had a very harsh things to say about white sneakers and rolled up jean shorts and, you know, big giant t-shirts that say, I love the USA. USA. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and look, I love the USA too, a lot, right? But if I'm gonna travel, I'm not gonna travel with US flags all over the place. Probably not gonna bring your special forces ODA, you know, koozie with you anywhere. But that I'm really could... proud of it, it's my favorite koozie. Yeah, I know. I know. You use it here with us, okay. right? So that's sort of the first step is just to understand where you're going and what you can do to minimize being an, an easy target, uh, easy target or, or soft target. Yeah, so two things there to highlight, one is, we may have preconceived notions about the people, like in the countries that we're visiting, right? That's fine, but guess what? They also have preconceived notions about us, and that's the more important side of the equation to be aware of. Lots of money. You're an American, you're rich. Oh yeah, all kinds of things that may or may not be true. But the first soft imperative is what, Jason? Understand your operational environment. And so, whether you wanna talk about being a gray man or being a harder target and all those things, like, I'm for all that, but regardless of what you're doing, if you're gonna be outside of a, you know, your home, your neighborhood, you should understand your operational environment. And that doesn't mean you should be afraid of it. It doesn't mean that it's bad or worse mm -hmm. than where you're from. It might be better in a lot of cases. It doesn't mean that you're gonna get like the sandbag hood over your head and get like rolled up in a carpet like Bob Bear in Iran or something. Like, like that could happen in some places, but it, it, it applies across the whole spectrum of activities. Like maybe you just wanna meet girls in the bar and you don't wanna look foolish. Maybe you just want to make friends. Maybe you don't want to have a pickpocket, take your wallet. You know, it's On the, the subway when it's really crowded, and yeah, it's et the cetera. Yeah, full, full spectrum of things, but what it all comes back to, at its root, is the first soft imperative, which you always have to employ, which is just understand your operational environment. And if you bump that up against your goals and objectives, right? Are you trying to like catch some good surf? Are you trying to see the Louvre? Are you trying to meet a girl? Mm -hmm. What you know? Are you trying to collect intelligence? Whatever you're trying to do, you understand that. You understand your environment. You're way ahead of the game, just right there. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about like, what are some tactics, tactically speaking, and like these apply uniquely to different circumstances. Like Malaysia is a lot different than London, but tactically speaking, what are some things you can do that minimize that allow you to maximize your awesome? while minimizing your risk to help you be a bit of a gray man. So in understanding your environment, understand that you're, this is an away game for you. You're playing by their rules and people are emotional creatures. So they have every right to like what they like and you know, have their bias or whatever you wanna call it, you're, you're traveling to them. Yeah, siestas happen, the stores aren't open, 
<laughs> you probably shouldn't throw a fit about it. Go take a CS. <laughs> right. So, you know, we've talked about a couple tips or tricks to do that. The first is, you know, fundamentally be a gray man. You don't want to advertise, hey, I'm from America. And, and I say this for, not because you're not proud to be from America. I'm really proud to be an American. I almost want to start singing the song right now to prove how much I'm I feel like I'm being I'm proud one of your challenges right now. <laughs> some Lee Greenwood going I do often here. make my classes sing some good Lee Greenwood. I love that guy. He's awesome. Give me an A or give me an F. You know what I mean? <laughs> Two grades at GORUCK. A and F, A minus rounds down, you will get an A. Anyway, that's a sidebar. But you, you don't want to have U.S. flag patches all over the place. You don't want to wear white shoes. You don't want to, you know, have big giant t-shirts with loud prints stuff all over them because what happens is, is if you've got something really big and it's really making a statement, you know, Old Navy or take any of these big sort of even local brands that are national brands to us that we might say, hey, this is really a, a really common thing. Not so common over yeah. there. For you veterans out there that love all of like the veteran t-shirts, like we love all of our friends in the veteran space, the, yeah. the grunt styles and the nine lines and the article 15s, like those guys are awesome. Most of those shirts, probably not going to help you be a domestic. gray man in some of those environments. Yeah, that's for, that's for domestic in, Including wear. a number of Go Rock t-shirts as well. Yeah. Less I so, mean, but still the case. Yeah, any of them. You don't really want to advertise anything. You're not a walking billboard, especially over there. So I you will want... say this, this Go Ruck long sleeve rugging <laughs> shirt, however, <laughs> very neutral. This is brought to you by our, like... <laughs> our generous sponsors at Go Ruck. I like it very right. much. <laughs> <laughs> so colors like gray and black and, you know, tan and stuff like that, depending upon where you are, helps you blend in more. Um, mm -hmm. You know, then there's, then there's the sort of the SF casual, or what we sometimes call action casual, which can also give you a little bit. So if you've got like the Merrill hiking shoes, the jeans, the fleece that's like North Face or Patagonia and a ball cap, that's, you know, getting a little close. Or if you have one of those kind of tactical shirts on, like that's, you know, you roll the sleeves 17 up and you can button buttons. them up here. Yeah, 17 buttons yeah, and, pocket and 47 pockets. For like a pen or Velcro. something. Velcro. Yeah. You probably don't, probably don't want to do that. But so... That's a, a basic look, but there are some other things too, like just maintaining situational awareness. Again, like understanding your operational environment doesn't just apply to like the pre-work, like where you're going, the general kind of atmospherics and what you're wearing. It also applies to in the moment. So like, having your headphones in in crowded places that reduce your situational awareness, maybe not as good. Here's a big one that most of us have been guilty of. Don't get too drunk in yeah. some of these places to where like you then degrade your own capacity to sort of understand your environment and defend yourself and these things. If it's two in the morning and you're real, real drunk and you get isolated from your friends, I don't care if you're in Jacksonville or if you're in Honduras or if you're in Beijing or wherever, like you're probably not doing yourself any favors and you're taking unnecessary risks that you just don't Some places those risks can be really, really bad. I mean, yeah. Almost any. Mexico so, City. This is also a difference between, between boys and girls, right? I mean, there's some difference, but it's not entirely. So, yeah. so Emily, Emily's taught me a lot, not not just about this, but in life. But one of her, <laughs> but one of her big things, she's always been a runner, and she refuses to run with headphones in ever. And the reason why is she says that you know she's not a she's not a big girl, right? Mm -hmm. And so if if she gets into trouble, her default is going to be to run. But if she gets ambushed wherever she might be. Right. You know, she needs to be able, like, that's a really bad day for her. So having headphones in reduces your situational awareness mm -hmm. and makes you unable to react as quickly when seconds or milliseconds matter to, to be able to, you know, escape, evade, and, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's certainly little, little tricks like that. I mean, another one is roll bags or, you know, you know, think like a criminal. A criminal is not going to pick on the 300 pound, you know, even if he's got one of the big giant, you know, pro USA shirts, probably not gonna pick on that guy in most of the places you're gonna travel to. Gonna, gonna pick on an easier target, someone smaller, someone isolated from the herd, right? So to your point about drinking too much, I mean, which zebras do the lions hunt? Yeah, the one that is separated from the herd and, and hopefully the small staggering. One. Yeah. The small one, yeah. the small one, right? One. Slow the one. weak one. And so don't be that zebra. Be be with the pack, be strong, blend in. Yeah, easy. I mean, so some other ones to kind of think about here is, you know, 
we talk about pattern of life a lot. Like if we, if we have on our green hat and we're going after the bad guys, we always want to understand pattern of life. And we want to know how they move, how they spend their days, where can we expect them to be so that we can get them. Well, criminals, and I, I like the criminal lens a lot because look, the chances are you're not going to get like abducted by a terrorist or something like that. And, and honestly, if terrorists want to kind of wield their will, they do it somewhat indiscriminately because the value of terrorism to them is that it creates terror amongst people that were not associated with the event. So spending a lot of your time worried about like these kind of crazy worst case scenarios is not nearly as valuable as spending more of your time looking at it through the lens of like a criminal, as you say, like what, what does a pickpocket think? What does someone who wants to get in your hotel room and rummage through your bag think? You know, what does someone who just wants to mug you on the street and take your wallet kind of think? That is a, is a very helpful lens to look at this stuff through. And there are some pretty easy things you can do, like, you know, change your pattern of life a little bit. Don't always leave your hotel room at exactly the same time and take exactly the same path and go exactly the same places. You know, mix up your route a little bit. So mix up what you're doing. Like, just make yourself a little harder to predict. And even if you're doing it intentionally, to the outside observer, it appears that you're random. And that becomes very hard to predict. And then they're not going to mess with you because you're, you're, it's just too hard. You know, just, criminals want to go for what's stupider. easy. There's someone else. Yeah. So they're, they're this checking is so handles on doors of cars to see which ones are unlocked first before they're going to even worry about picking a lock on a car. So like, you know, lock your car doors. Or smashing a window or whatever that makes noise. Yeah, they don't noise. want to do that if they don't have to, right? No, of course not. So, so this, is, this goes back to sort of how you would run routes on missions as well. You don't want to go out from point A to point B and then go straight back from point B, which, oh, by the way, maybe you, you made a lot of noise there, guns and bombs and whatever, and just by showing up. Now, everybody knows that you're at point B, right? And so if you go back the same exact way that you came in, that's... You'll have some presence waiting for you on the side of the yeah. Probably. yeah. Yeah, and so that's not the goal. So changing up your pattern of life or the way that you... You know, go about a city or the way that you, you travel around when you, when you get there is, you know, some, some randomness is good. Not at the expense of, of unnecessary risk, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I would say, at, with all of that being said, at the risk of going too far into being worried, here's the thing. We're, we're not trying to suggest, nor should you be, paranoid while you're traveling. Like, the whole point of this is to, like, sort of maximize the awesomeness of your travel. So you mm -hmm. want to have fun. You want to be able to have the Coronas on the beach at the surf hostel. You want to be able to have a good time on your travel. We don't want you to be paranoid. We want you to be prepared. And there's a, there's a big difference, you know, between the two. And so one way that can actually help you is to not be fearful or worried about the locals, but to actually engage with them. This is kind of like SF 101, by the way. Yes. You don't, you don't accomplish anything. 12 barrel chested American freedom fighters get dropped in the middle of somewhere guess what, the 12 of you, the 12 of us, are, are getting zero accomplished, and we're probably getting killed pretty quick, if we just like walk around thumping our chest thinking that we're going to pacify the valley or The win, bullets win don't the care war. if you're a Green Bray or not. No, they don't care at all, by the way. My tissue is not particularly good at stopping 762 by 39 at all. <laughs> um, so you, you have to engage with the environment that you're in. And by the way, you're going to have a lot more fun, you're gonna have a much more awesome time if you can sort of embed yourself a little bit with the locals. They're gonna give you great tips. They're gonna appreciate the fact that you attempt to speak their language even if you suck at it. You know, and you're gonna make some friends locally. And again, if you're situationally aware, they're not gonna take advantage of you. They're gonna to wanna to help you out. So definitely don't assume the posture that everyone's kind of out to get you. And in more cases than not, most people are out to help you. Mm -hmm. And you can have a lot, are good. More, a lot more fun that way. People you know? are good by and large. Yeah, you know? so like one, just to throw in a story, we went, um, my wife and I, which I think is part of the drinking game, my wife Jenny and I, drink, <laughs> my wife Jenny and I went down to Central that's, that's America three. once, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and we, just, we just signed up for something, we went sea kayaking out to some island, and it actually was like a ton of PT, because the surf was bad that day, and so we went on this awesome trip with one guy, just me and her and our guide, who spoke no English. And our Spanish was not particularly good at the time. So communication was creative. Now was, you're fluent, but then it was... I'm it was. not fluent now either, but I'm much better. <laughs> um, but we had this really awesome day. We're like doing all the sea kayaking. We did some snorkeling, blah, blah, blah. And we made it back. And we, we'd had fun. We'd sort of built this connection with our, with our man, Pedro. And like, for whatever reason, he was like, I just want to hang out. You guys, I'm inviting you to lunch at my little shack on the beach later. And so we're like, mm, okay. 
So we bought some beer, we showed up at a shack, and like they grilled some fish on a hibachi for us, and we had this great time. And he asked us what we like to drink, and we're like, uh, beer is cool. And you were probably glad that scene from Eyes Wide Shut didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Different story, Jason. <laughs> so, so we're there kind of like enjoying the fish and having some beers, and he asked us what we like to drink, and we're like, no, the beer is fine. He's like, no, what do you really like to drink? We're like, I guess we drink, we drink vodka, like vodka soda, I guess, you know. And so like he disappears for a minute and runs off to the store and buys some vodka. And so like we're cutting up limes as if we're like shooting tequila now. And we're like doing like salt and lime and we're shooting vodka, which I don't really recommend. It's not kind of my thing, but whatever. So limes and we're kind of going yeah. with the flow, yeah. But he ends up introducing us to all of his friends. Later that day, we end up in a bit of a drunken haze at this awesome like local soccer match. We're like meeting all these people and his family and his girlfriend who's French and like from that point on, we actually were there just this past summer, which was three years later. And he's like, you guys want to rent surfboards? You want to rent paddle boards? You want to go on a tour? My treat. Like, we, we just were trying our best to speak broken Spanish to him and, like, not be total wusses as we're paddling through the surf and, like, tipping over our kayak every 10 to 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. And, like, it engendered so much sort of friendship with him that it stuck with us then for years later. So... Definitely don't don't be afraid to engage with the locals. That's what any good green beret would make a priority. Yeah, as I mean, soon as you get your to boots include the, ground, the right? food that you have to eat with the people that have to get to eat with the people that are there. Right? So a modium, bring a modium. That way you can you can engage with whatever food and drink you need to. And if things get really bad, have two after your first loose stool, one after each following one, no more than six in a day. Yeah. And you're going to be fine. Okay, that's a pro tip. <laughs> beer with every meal. Not that I know from experience. Beer with, beer with every meal. Like you get all the water you need from coffee and beer, right? <laughs> As someone who's somewhat interested in nutrition and fitness, I can't really endorse that statement. <laughs> but as a gr former Green Beret, I, I like it yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where I come out. <laughs> Maybe on vacation it's cool. Yeah, on vacation it's cool, right? Travel, right. have adventures, yeah. be awesome, right? <laughs> Minimize the risk. You know, beer, it's not vodka even, you know? Anyway. Oh, no. Okay. Anyway. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go back to the sort of planning part of this, though. Okay. Right? Being a little bit more, I don't know, serious. Hopefully that's not a, like, bad word. No, serious so is good. Then we'll, so, we'll lighten so up. So you, you go into, you know, you're, you're planning your trip to wherever it might be. I mean, there are all types of different environments with, you know, this one's a little more permissive than this one. And by permissive, we just mean your ability to blend in naturally. You know, you think, hey, you're a, you're a white guy from America traveling to London. You're gonna be able to kind of walk around and you're- Permissive environment, especially if you have global entry, TSA pre-check. Permissive environment. Yep. So, however, even in, in going to London or any big city for that matter, there, there are certain parts of town probably don't want to go there. Yeah, you know, to include New York, Miami, yeah. Jacksonville. Yeah. Right? Domestic you, as well. You don't want to go there. So there's a part of your, your trip that is planning to know, hey, this is the part of town I don't want to go to. Or this is what I've, this is, you know, cardinal directions being, I don't want to get too complicated, but, you know, North, never eat soggy waffles style, right? And you say there are certain parts of town that are less good, right? It's not a judgment, it's just a fact. They're, they're less good, and they're really less good if you don't know where you are, or... You accidentally find yourself you there. You accidentally right? find yourself there, and oh yeah, oops, you just did, you know, 15 vodka shots, and you know... Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. So there, you can set yourself up for success on the planning front, however, you also gotta let life happen a little bit, you know? Like getting as too, life tends to yeah, getting yeah. too structured to your sort of hey th this spot this spot this spot this spot, you know we would advocate more of a meet the locals, let the adventures come to you. I used to when I'd roll into a town, I'd say hey if you had one night to live in in your town, where would you go? And I'd try to find some local in the middle of downtown, and I'd ask him that. So, caveat, I have to inter I have to interrupt. Do it. I was done anyway. Somebody walks through the oh, By the way, I do have a, a tall boy now. Good, good I, I have for a little all while. All grown up, and you're all grown <laughs> up. So let's say somebody walks through the front door here at mm -hmm. Go Ruck Scars, which tends to happen on a regular basis. And let's say Bomber's passed out at his desk, which may or may not happen occasionally. And they say, hey, Jason, I'm in Jack's Beach, one night only. It's the last night of my life. What do I do in Jack's Beach? So we've got awesome beaches. So you got to go to the beach. 
Okay. And then, you know, it just tur turns into where do you want to go? I mean, if, if you want, presuming somebody wants to go out to a specific spot here, yeah. I mean, the three best bars People here. People like to eat, they like to drink, they like to have the fun. The three so. best ba bars here are all dive bars. Fly's Thai, Pete's, Ginger's, right? Without a doubt. I want to dispute Ginger so badly, but we'll, we're... Have you been? We, no, I haven't been. Okay, so... I'm terrified of it. <laughs> He's terrified of it. It's so weak, right? <laughs> you're, 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 already a, you're already scared of it. And yeah. You haven't even... You just don't know them, I've made right? a lot of prejudgments You haven't, yes, you, you haven't you guys met haven't the people. Place. They still have their boards on the window from <laughs> Hurricane Irma. They haven't taken them down yet. They haven't even bothered. <laughs> oh, it's, it's way worse than that. But once you sit down... <laughs> At the bar stool, and you talk with them. It's it's truly a locals place. Okay. So anyway, right. proceed. I'm sorry. All right. So then you've got you so know, gingers, Pete's, flies tie. Yes. Got it. Okay. And Pose is a great place to go. Sit outside because I always like to be outside. Mm -hmm. So you sit outside, and enjoy the the you know what what do you call them globe lights and just I don't know. all the all the beers that they bring you and and. You, so you, you hydrate properly that night. I mean, yeah. so, I mean so, we can get more specific. There's all sorts of water sports and there's all sorts of that kind of stuff. But you, you definitely don't be in a car. Get a right. bike. Rent, you know, borrow a bike. I, I'm not going to advocate stealing a bike. I, I would advocate you can rent them acquiring. The you need yeah. to acquire a bike. Okay. That means you rent one. That's great. So like, right? go Ruck Constellation does not involve how to steal a bicycle. <laughs> okay, we don't advocate that kind of behavior. Hey, if it's the end of the world and you've got to get from point A to point B, you do what you got to do. It's your last day to live. I mean, you do what you got to do, you know? Okay. You can borrow my bike if you guys need to. <laughs> we usually have a beach cruiser or two laying around here that belong to somebody that's not yep. claimed it lately. So, yep. It's easy. It's okay. Fact. So, I'm sorry. I, I interrupted a lot, but you were talking about planning, knowing where you're going to be, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, then you, you know, the, the planning does matter, though. You talk if, to the locals and if then you're, they tell you. If you're going to a place where, you know, you have white skin and everybody else there has dark skin, just realize that's going to be a thing. So you have to be more cognizant of what that, what that means. Or vice versa. Yeah, or vice Maybe versa. Maybe even more so. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, those are just realities. We can, we can hope and wish and want that it's a, a colorblind society. And, and like, thankfully in America, we're sort of spearheading a lot of that despite, you know, recent turmoils and stuff. Like, there might be some people outside the States that don't love us so much just based on our political environment. Yes. Probably should be aware of that. Yes. So if, if someone all of a sudden hates our president outside of our, our borders and you show up, you now represent. I don't care if you voted for him or not. And, and by the way, they don't either. Yeah, that, that's the care. important part. Yeah. People are emotional creatures. You have to understand that. And so if you bring your, hey, but I, you know, I don't like, I, I didn't vote for him or whatever, they don't care, right? You come from America, Donald Trump is your president, and if they, if they harbor you know, ill will against whatever that means, then you, know, you just have to realize that they're an emotional person and mm -hmm. that might put you at a disadvantage. So let's, let's lighten it up here a little bit. Let's talk about where, where you want to travel. So here's, here's, here's my thesis, and you tell me if I'm wrong. When people talk about travel, they're like, oh, I want to travel, right? I want to, I want to win the lottery, and what would I do? I would just travel, right? I think we tend toward the exotic. Like when we talk about traveling, we talk about going somewhere like Fiji or... Yeah. You know, somewhere Machu Picchu and those kinds of things, which is fine, by the way. And like, I want to go to all those places myself. But we, I think, we tend to overlook the value of travel that is not really exotic. I think we tend to overlook and undervalue travel to other places here in the states, or even places that are kind of more local to where you're at, or places that just don't involve as much like saving and planning and extravagance as your big trip to Bali or we, My dad and I, we used to get in the car in the summer and it was, you know, you know, he was trying to save a dime, God bless him, so there was no AC, I windows down, like this, yeah. August, you know, it's August, we're going <laughs> wherever, we're driving the whole way on the interstate, there's a bunch of, you know, he was, uh, he was dating a girl with three kids at the time, there's four of us in the back seat. I was stopping to pee. <laughs> Not good. Not it was not, not good. Recommend. It was. Okay. I have a really, I really strong dad, bladder now. Our dads have never met. That probably needs to happen. I think <laughs> that they're, needs they're to happen. They're basically the same person. <laughs> so we would go, you know, to Niagara Falls, or we would go to to Caesar's Creek, or we would go to Indianapolis because it was a couple hours away from 
from, from Dayton. And I mean, to me, those were just exotic lands. Yeah. You know, just exotic. And it was just one of those things where it's all about your perspective. Yeah. So you see these things through the eyes of a child, and I think you gain a lot, a very important perspective. Like we've taken my boys to, we, we took them to Oregon one summer. Actually, they had, they've had some pretty good summers. We actually took them to Oregon, and the next month we took them to Costa Rica. But like we've taken them to Maine, and like they think it's the greatest thing ever. And I love taking them places. You know, it's obviously a little bit more work and a little bit more expense, and maybe a little less fun at times for my wife and I, my wife, but <laughs> this drinking game is too much fun. Um, but the benefit of it is I get to see the wonder that they bring to this. And it reminds me that I probably should be a little bit more interested and awestruck at some of these things going on. Like they saw Cannon Beach in Oregon and like Haystack Rock and there were the Goonies, you know, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? And they were just like, whoa. This is the coolest thing ever. And next thing you know, like we're in the water doing like the polar bear plunge in the North Pacific there because they couldn't, they had to get in the water. They were, they had never seen the Pacific Ocean before. And like, they're not going to not get in the water. And so guess what dad gets to do anytime the kids want to do something, right? So now I'm down to my shorts, no shirt, and we're jumping in the Pacific Ocean. And it was a phenomenal experience that frankly, if it was just my wife and I, we're, we're probably having a drink and looking at the beautiful view and we're not like stripping down and getting in the water. But I, but I that, that could be fun too, though. Jason, you keep, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with you today, man. I, you, you're pretending to know things about me that I'm not sure that you know, but. It's the tall boys. It's the tall, <laughs> it's the tall boys. Tall, tall Blame boys. it on the tall boys. <laughs> but I, it's, it's incredibly important. The last time that we went to Maine, which is a great place, by the way, state of Maine, fantastic. The way Jenny's life, from there, imagine The way that. life should be. My love wife it. is from Maine. Um, <laughs> but we bring the kids there, and they're, just, they're like, they want to move there. Because we take them, typically we take them there in the warmer months, and so they just yeah. think it's like the greatest thing ever. Oh, oh here's, a, here's a really important travel. Be wary, or be very, very, you know, God, what's the right word? Be on guard when somebody says, oh, you should show up in August. It's awesome in August, right? I went to Iceland with Emily. <laughs> It was, I have never, I have never <laughs> been so cold in my life. And I've been really cold as I was in Iceland. You know it's called Iceland, right? Yeah, you know, I read all okay. the hipster reviews about how awesome and beautiful it was. You, you know, you show up and they've got your, your Range Rover for you and you just, you know, drive around and there's waterfalls. And then they've got pictures of, you know, people smiling. They've got a light little jacket on. Like, no, there's no light there jacket. There are hot springs there, no? I wanted the, yes, there's okay. the Blue Lagoon there, right? Which is, which is cool. They've sort of made it really fancy, but it, 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 deserves, a, it, it deserves a visit. It's pretty awesome. My only time in Iceland was on my way back from Iraq in 2004. You yeah. stopped in Iceland? Yeah, so I flew... And I stopped um, in Ireland. I flew from Kuwait City. I actually flew from Baghdad International Airport on a C-130 to Kuwait City. And I flew from Kuwait City to like Romania or something. I can't even remember. It was somewhere in Eastern Europe. And then, then mm. we flew from there to Shannon, Ireland. Yeah. I, I slept through pretty much the whole time in Eastern Europe because I had taken an Ambien. And like I was just your medic out of hooked it. you up, yeah. Yeah. So then we landed in Shannon, Ireland, and it, I left. It was like November. Did you drink or a bunch of beers at Shannon? Yeah. At the airport. Yeah. yeah. So this is why Shannon, Ireland has like this very oh amazing. It's, spot it's in my emotional. Heart. I are, love it. You guys know what I'm yes, talking about. Yes, I love it. I so, love it. <laughs> so we land in Shannon, Ireland, but the, like the best thing about it, at first at least, was it was still incredibly hot in Baghdad in October or whenever it was that I left, and it, and it had been awfully hot since probably April or May, right? And not particularly green, just kind of dry and hot. You know the deal. You mm -hmm. were in southern, southern Iraq. And 148 we, was our hottest day there. Jesus Christ. That's hot. So we're flying over. We're making our approach into the airport in Shannon, Ireland. And I see they have like one of those things on, on the plane that kind of shows the track of the airplane, like the air temperature and stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And it says that it's like 53 degrees or something like that. Yeah. Fahrenheit. In, in Shannon. And I look out and it's just green. Like, it's the Green Isle, right? It's Ireland. <laughs> it's green everywhere. And you can see like this like... <clears throat> coat of like dew on all the grass mm. and like 
I really struggled. I wanted to bolt out of the airport, which you're not allowed to do, like because you're kind of sequestered, you know, when you're. It's the whole army out. thing, yeah. <laughs> but I just wanted to run out of the airport and just roll around in this like wet, cool grass. I had this whole year in Iraq where it was like hot almost like the sound sandy. of music or something. It was bizarre. <laughs> like I had a lot of really bizarre emotions in Shannon because also when we walked off the plane there, and I'm kind of groggy. All of the these Irish people had they had lined up and they were clapping for us. We were all wearing DCUs. And they started clapping for us. And I'd been over there for long enough, and I was just like, I don't know how to process this right now. I'm not sure, like, thank you, but I feel really weird and yeah. self-conscious about all this because I'd been in Baghdad. Like, Probably a lot of McCarthy's there, you know? Yeah. Just Probably showing a lot of respect. Smiths, too. They love us. I don't know if you know this. Smith is the second most common last name in Ireland. Did you know that? No. Okay, no. now you do. Um, and now Blaine do. is an Irish Gaelic name. So yeah. anyway, so, but then they have the bar there. Yeah. Where you can get your first beer oh, yeah. in nine months or twelve months or whatever it is, and you get like a true Guinness. Yeah, I'll bet it was your show. first beer in twelve months. It was. You know what? It was my first <laughs> beer. I'd had. My... Oh, because you weren't in SF coming back no. from Iraq. <laughs> no. Okay, my bad. No, I forgot. I was in, I was in the. I big forgot. Army. <laughs> and the only thing, so I'd had non-alcoholic beer, and then one time, I think it was only one time, one time, my interpreter, beer. a feed, best guy ever, he had gone to the. Um, I forget the name of the hotel in Baghdad. It was so easy. It's like where all the journalists stayed. They had a bar. He went there and he had bought a bottle of Jack Daniels on his own dime. And he had snuck it into our, our fob one evening and he gave it to me and my platoon sergeant. It was like this amazing gift. And uh, me and my platoon sergeant, two of my, I guess my two senior scouts or two of my other NCOs, drank an entire bottle of Jack Daniels one night. Um, <clears throat> I felt terrible the next day because I hadn't had a drink in like six months. Oh, I bet it was bad. But we had to finish it. We're like, we have to finish this, guys, because we can't have this laying around tomorrow. No. Um, yeah, but anyway, the, the point, I guess, I don't know if there was a point to the whole thing, but it was just like that, that sense of wonder was really like there for me because it was so new and fresh as I was coming back through. And my kids have taught me a lot about just appreciating the value of like this, the newness and the excitement of going these places, even if it's like, across town like we'll go sometimes to a, a state park here in florida like we have these uh natural springs in florida mm -hmm. that have this like cold water that bubbles up from the ground and all that stuff cold water springs in florida yeah, yeah. you guys didn't know that <laughs> um bomber and his girlfriend went to one recently right what was it called devil's what devil's den. devil's den but like they lose their mind over this stuff and it reminds me that i also should be really pumped to travel and like really look forward to it even if it's not like to cape town yeah, so so two things. The, I was reminded that you, your bottle of Jack Daniels, international currency in Africa is Johnny Walker Black. You ever go to Johnny Walker Black? This is a small little tip. It is, you know, everyone from warlords to businessmen to you name it. And these you, are really tactical tips we're getting into if, now. If you want to blend in, you order a Johnny Walker Black. I, I wouldn't do it now unless I Whole really... Whole continent or Northern Africa? Or just, I mean, uh, West Africa, you know, South Africa, Johnny Walker Black. So you've been, you've been to South Africa. And, and I've been all over West Africa. In the Mauritania and all... In, in North Africa. So Mauritania, Algeria, Morocco, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, you know, some and other... And Johnny Walker Black is... Johnny Walker Black. It's, it's universal. I can do it. I think Johnny Walker Black's okay. I, I'm, I'm not a big Scotch guy, though. I don't, I'll don't. i admit that right now on the show. I think a lot of guys feel like they have to love IPAs and Scotch. I don't really love either. I, IPAs I'm better with than I used to be. I like bourbon a lot. I don't really love Scotch. I just, mm. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't love Scotch. There it is. <laughs> I do love my wife, though. <laughs> Oh, the drinking game. Fun, fun. All right, so la last bit here. I think people people maybe want to know. Bomber, if you have questions, you can you can start firing them now. But yeah, we have a few. Okay, so you know what? Let's just go ahead and do that. I won't I won't presume to know what people want to know. You tell me. Okay. Well, one of the things was addressing how to greet GRPs in the wild. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Good question. Bomber asks about how to greet GRTs in the wild. So, for those of you that don't have the context, we see more than I'd like to see. Photos on Facebook in, the, in a tough group of people spotting a, a GORUCK, you know, a GR1 or a GR2 in an airport. Usually it's in an airport, could be anywhere. And what they do is they like, they like surreptitiously like snipe a photo yeah. of someone's ruck and they're like, and then they post it online like, hey, I saw a ruck. Like, first of all, thank you. Like, yeah. we're, we're, we're excited to see our rucks in the wild, but we sell a fair number of them, so we know they're out there. What we would prefer you do is you go up to that person and you say, hey, Nice ruck, or say, "Hey, go ruck." 
and you see what they do, and then you can introduce yourself. Or the universal pickup line or just introduction that works all the time. Hi, my name is. <laughs> I would encourage yeah. all you guys to give that one a shot. Whether you're bumping into a GRT in the wild or trying to meet a girl in the bar, hello, yeah. my name is. Yeah. Primo. Best one I've ever had anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's all kind of about, you know, if, if you don't hunch over like Quasimodo and swallow your words like you're, you're afraid to talk, then, you know, they'll probably be, you know, more receptive to what you have to say after you say this uni universal thing of, yeah, hello, my name is. Like, what's the greatest pickup line in history? Hello, my name is Jason, right? <laughs> he would like to believe it was Jason specifically. <laughs> that may or may not be true, but hey. Fill in the blank with your name, whatever, details. All right. All right, does that, I think that covers it. Bomber, what's next? Uh, Jason, this is directed towards you. Travel tips for someone that would be going to St. Augustine this weekend that might be at the table doing their first event. Oh, first, okay. I'll let you get to this, but I will be at the Zombie Apocalypse Tough this Friday night in St. Augustine. You won't so just be there. I will be participating. I'll be a gladiator in the event, so I look forward to seeing you guys there. <laughs> All right, what else should they do besides the Tough? So if Friday you night? really, so one of, this is, this is kind of a couple we were, worlds we were, colliding. We were just there. So the the Go Rock Challenge in its absolute origins was designed to be a tour, the best spots in in your town. And when I there there was one trip that I took in two thousand two, and I, I flew in to Istanbul and I flew out of Dublin. Right, I, I made it all the way. I'm, you know, mostly trains, but some buses, you know, the bus from Athens to wherever it was. I, I can't even remember anymore, right? And, and so in, in that process, it was it's sort of, I wish I had had Go Rug to, to have these sort of anchors to my travel calendar to say, hey, yeah. here's this city, here's this city. How do I see it, you know? And it's not always... It's not always that you just want to see this museum or that church or, or whatever, but just some way to kind of, all of a sudden you can meet a local, you can get, get a guided tour of, of that city. So mm -hmm. the best way that you should travel to St. Augustine, and I, I did a, a post on this way back when, it was, it's because the first St. Augustine event was class 007, and I was just home that first winter of, that, that we'd started it in 2010. And I said, I just need to pop up an event. We needed some revenue or whatever, right? Because you always do. And revenue is uh, good. It's like it's why people thing. go. It's like why bands that haven't had albums in years they just decide to go on tour, right? They're just like, oh, we just need some revenue. Anyway, so you know, went down there and I saw the the trolleys. You know, it's sort of like the the big red bus or whatever that you'll see in some of the big cities. And I just kind of. To me, the, the difference was stark. You can, you can visit this in a bus or you can visit this on foot with a bunch of other people. And so you're not recommending the trolley? I'm, I'm not really recommending the trolley. I mean, I think it's better than not going. And I think that there's certainly, you know, if I were gonna go with my, with, you know, my dad or my, someone to a new town and there's lots of things, like Dublin, for instance, you wanna go all the way up to Phoenix Park? Because I've led an event in Dublin as well. You can go all the way to Phoenix Park, it's awesome. Right? But you also want to go to the Guinness, you know, you want to do all of these things, you can't get there rucking if you're, if you're normal, <laughs> right? I mean, or certainly not in one day. So right. anyway, the guided tour of St. Augustine, it's best with a, with a cadre-led go ruck event. That's all you're getting, folks. Sign yeah, up. Yeah, then a day pack, bring some water, however it comes, 12-ounce 12 12 ounce cans of Budweiser or whatever. I'll buy you a beer. Let's go. Yeah. You got, Andy, Andy Cole had a comment how this kind of ties in with Constellation. Good question. So Andy asks how this whole conversation ties in with Constellation. We actually had a good talk about Constellation earlier today. I mean, at the risk of sort of pushing it too much, I think one of the things that we, we actually care about and believe in is, is this topic, your ability to travel and travel the world and to have an awesome time and to have fun and make the most of it without you know running the risk of, of being stupid or making yourself an easy mark. So. Constellation is a go rock event that we, I don't know how many we're going to do this year. We'll do 25 or 30 next year. It just teaches you basic kind of urban survival skills. Situational awareness. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is on, with the backdrop of there's some sort of disaster. There's a hurricane or an earthquake or something. And some of your normal creature comforts and utilities may not be available. So there may not be electricity or clean water and those kinds of things. 
So you learn, you know, fire starting, water purification, you know, how to move, basic, uh, how to, you know, defeat some locks and restraints and mm -hmm. some of those things. You know, I think <clears throat> if you go to Constellation, like we would obviously recommend it, you're going to learn probably the majority of the skills that we're referring to, you're probably going to learn at a 12-hour Constellation. But, but learn how to do them. Not, not in theory, not That's I read on, a yeah. book. Because ultimately reading books, it doesn't, it's good for you as a philosopher, the, the poet part of the warrior poet avatar, but you've, you've got to do these things. And so to put them into practice, we want you to be a hard target. And that's a, so let's clarify what that means, or rather what that doesn't mean. A hard target does not start stupid fights at a bar, right? Ever. There, there's almost nothing worth fighting for. And I'm proud to say that because the things that are worth fighting for are really worth fighting for. Yeah, save, save your gas. Save your gas. Okay. I mean, if, you know, if someone starts a fight, that's completely different. So if someone starts a fight, that's, that's a fight worth fighting because you don't want to just like sit there and die. Never just sit there and die. Fight back. That's good advice. Right? Yeah. So you know, we want people to be more aware more sort of able to able to face the dangers that are that are always out there and all those types of you know skills that mindsets really that that you learn as far as i don't want to go down i don't want to go this way i want to go this way i don't this is more like a safe house than than this place over here this place might be still open you know a, a train station for instance the it's the Whatever, it, it sounds like a zoo, like the zoo train station in Berlin. Yeah, I slept there. Not, not gonna lie, right? Like, I slept there. The hostel was closed. I didn't have any money. Where do you sleep? The train station. Easy. Public place. You know, it's better than doing what Jason Bourne did, even. Sleeping outside on the bench, waiting for the cops to show up. And then, what happened to him? He got, he got sloppy in that, right? He picked a bad place to sleep. Out in the open in a public park, the cops came up, they, they prodded him, he woke up, he, he woke up, he, he beat him up real quick, and then, you know, then like, everyone yeah. found out Jason that he was there. We have at least one, maybe two Jason Bourne posters yes. here somewhere, so yeah. respect, but... Respect. Green Beret right there. Lost his... Lost his um, Don't sleep on composure. the public... I mean, ultimately, he was being hunted or whatever, so it's, it's, it's different, but... Yeah, you well, know, but your point, though, safe. hard target, like, what we're trying to say is, again... It doesn't mean you go around like putting your back to every corner, assuming everyone's out to get you. That is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is there are some basic things you can do that just allow you to minimize stupid risks while kind of maximizing your experience. So if you show up with four, don't be paranoid. If you show up with four Louis Vuitton bags and a big giant thousand dollar T-shirt that says "I love USA" and it's got glitter and stuff all over it, you know, when you're rolling down cobblestone streets in any town world, someone, think like a criminal, what are they going to do? They're going to say, that's, that's who I want to, that's who I want to go after. They're going to figure out where you check in. They're going to figure out what your room is. They're going to, I mean, like I, I'm, I'm almost plagued by thinking like a criminal too much. I, I, I wish I could turn it off sometimes. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to go that far. No, you don't. Yeah. But well, don't don't have four Louis Vuitton bags, you know, walking down cobblestone. It's also just a miserable way to travel. What movie was it where the guy said that hell is a five-piece Samsonite set? <laughs> was it? it wasn't Dumb and Dumber, but there was a, a different oh, thing about Samsonite. No, slappy, slappy, swami. Yeah, I was way off. Swanson. Yeah, yeah. So get a GR240 liter. Problem there solved. There you go. Or a GR3. Solved. Bomber, anything else worth addressing? All right, I think I, we've I think we're we've I think done we're our best. Done. Yeah, when it, when in doubt, watch Anthony Bourdain. No reservations. Or think about the Twain things. quote: "Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness, and many of our people need it." You also need to not be taken, not be stupid. You need to go out, adventure, see the world, maximize the adventure, minimize the risk, be a hard target, be a gray man, blend in, and it's all around you. You don't you don't have to go to Fiji to experience a new experience, and travel. Yeah, Fiji wouldn't be bad, but it's, you know, we'll figure there's it. lots of places, awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, we enjoyed it. See you next time.